Association International, and welcome to HAI at Work, our weekly or monthly now webinar series. Today, we're going to look at one of the largest aircraft companies in the world and how Boeing actually supports the rotorcraft industry on a much smaller uh, scale. Um, their customer service programs are, uh, are, are honestly quite fascinating, it seems like. Um, it's going to be an exciting, uh, very interesting webinar. So let's get started with uh, who we have joining us today. There we go. Ty Gentman is uh, serves as the Senior Manager for Business and General Aviation Programs, uh, supporting the aftermarkets, uh, aftermarket parts market. Um, Ty began his, sorry, I've got to move some things around. Uh, I don't love technology. Uh, Ty began his career in the MRO aerospace market before joining Aviol in 2005, a year before the distribution company was acquired by uh, the Boeing company. Outside of Boeing, Ty has a passion for classic cars and helping special needs kids and is currently the president of Connors Foundation, a foundation that blends his two passions and is named after his son. Jim Matthews currently serves as the global head of sales uh, for business and general aviation for Boeing Distribution, Inc. He is responsible for leading the sales organization in the creation of the global supply chain solutions for business and general aviation market segment. And uh, Matthews holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering and a, bachelor, a Master's of Science degree in Manufacturing Engineering. He lives in rural Justin, Texas with his wife, son, youngest daughter, and his eldest daughter is in uh, nearby Fort Worth, Texas. And Sean Stubbs. Uh, Sean serves as the manager for commercial rotorcraft programs of Boeing Global Services, supporting the rotorcraft and MRO market, uh, aftermarket parts market. Sean began his career in the aftermarket aerospace market, joining Boeing in 2017 after spending the previous years in maintenance, repair, and overhaul industry of the rotorcraft sector. And Sean holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from the University of British Columbia. Yeah, come on. Let's do this after that. There we go. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, our webinars are interactive. We uh, do encourage you to ask questions, particularly on subjects like this. Uh, we do prefer that you use the question and answer module that's within Zoom. Um, we will not answer the questions live. We'll come back to the questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you want to use the chat feature, that's fine. You can chat amongst yourselves. Uh, we will pay attention to that, but we try to draw the questions out of the, the one section only just to maintain uh, some simplicity for us. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we do make the recording available um, as soon as possible after the webinar is over. It's usually the next day, uh, but it could be on Monday. It depends on how uh, rendering things like that go, uh, some editing. Uh, feel free to share the link. We'll get this posted to both our website and our YouTube channel here as quickly as possible. Uh, we free to free. If you miss something, you go back and watch it again. So let me wrap that up. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get started now. Um, again, as I mentioned, we are pleased to have representatives from Boeing Global Services with us today. Gentlemen, if you want to turn your camera on, we'll get started. There, and we are uh, Mr. Ty Yemen, Sean Stubbs, and Jim Matthews, representing Boeing's distribution business. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Great. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Dan. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's start with uh, Ty. And as noted in my introduction, uh, you're part of the Boeing, Boeing Global Services team. Let's start by, can you please help us understand what Boeing Global Services is and how helicopters fit into your portion of the business? Well, that's actually a really good question. We get asked this quite a bit. Um, so Boeing Global Services, or people also know it as BGS, uh, we love our acronyms in aviation, right? Uh, it was actually established in 2017 uh, as, a, as a third business unit, along with our uh, BCA, our Boeing Commercial Airplanes, and our, our BDS, our defense side. Uh, so that's the third pillar of Boeing, and it's actually here in Plano, Texas, which is about 30 minutes north of our facility here in, in Irving. Um, the interesting thing here is a lot of people aren't, don't know how integrated we are into the helicopter industry. 
And so we are committed to uh, servicing the market from anything from commercial aviation to defense to business aviation, general aviation, and in this case, rotorcraft. Um, and so the nice thing about the, what's, what's happened here with BGS is the depth and breadth that we have uh, across our organization. Uh, I think we're about 150,000 employees now across all of Boeing. Um, and this group here in particular is, is really focused around the rotorcraft business and how we support that. Uh, and again, that's that's all pieces of the business. And so what we were talking about before was because Boeing was not known for commercial aviation or commercial rotorcraft, I should say, uh, more around the defense helicopters, this is a good opportunity to talk about more what we have uh, from, from the rotorcraft support from the civil side. And so part of that was Boeing's acquisition of Avial, or which is now Boeing Defense or Boeing Distribution Inc., uh, happened in 2006 and actually got integrated into BGS in 2017. Um, at, in 2018 is when they actually acquired Kalect, which is another distribution company. Um, and while they have similar business types, they are different from that standpoint. So Jim's going to get into talking more about the uh, Boeing Distribution Services Inc. or the old KLX as we get into that, but they've also acquired companies like Foreflight, Jepson, and Spectre Lab, which uh, you and I talked about, Dan, a little bit. We, we have maybe some follow-on conversations around that, uh, but they're all part of what we talked about servicing the helicopter commercial market space. And so uh, with that, we referenced the uh, Avial and KLX. Those are legacy. Many customers knew the Avial, they knew the KLX, but they didn't know that we were part of Boeing now. So this, this is a great opportunity to really talk about those organizations and now being part of Boeing. Um, again, we're thankful for the opportunity you give us today, uh, Dan and, and team, because this is a great opportunity to talk to our customers. Uh, many of us known Sean, myself, uh, for many years being in the roadcraft industry. So we've got a lot of act a lot of friends around there. Uh, but it's great to, to speak out to other companies and talk about again these companies that offer these different support packages. Again, we talk about distribution. Jepson is obviously a very well known company, and Spectre Lab with its lighting sources. So. All, all again around supporting the commercial market space. And so yeah, what we wanted to do is help to provide this uh, offering and we'll get into some details with the team here about what we're offering. But when we talk about servicing the market, it's through the entire life cycle of the rotorcraft, right? So anything from brand new production, uh, which is really what the KLX side of business or the BDSI side, and that's supporting the new OEMs for manufacturing, right? Uh, then our side really is focused around the BDI side of the legacy AVL is really around operators, um, MROs, training schools, academies, things like that, where we're servicing the customer from the aftermarket side. Okay. And so what we're able to do now is really talk about going through the whole offering and services across that whole life cycle. And so that, that's more of a holistic approach is what we're really looking at there, Dan, and, and how we service that. So. Um, with that, we have everything. We've been well known for legacy engines. Um, one of the most common ones that people know us for is the Rolls Royce 250. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but one of the big pieces we added here recently was really adding in the, uh, on top of the consumable items that we already have, which is your batteries, your tires, your brakes, your consumable items. Uh, we've long been known for supporting that. Um, we've had a contract with some of these OEMs like Rolls Royce for 24 years now. Uh, well known around that. And one of the new pieces we've added really is around some lighting, some avionics, search lights, and most recently is the USM category, which Sean will get in and talk to. Okay, yeah, no, I uh, honestly had the opportunity to visit Spectra Lab last fall, and I came, um, came away very, very impressed. So uh, it, uh, it's, it, it was interesting to see where the, uh, the night suns actually came from and were built. Um, Okay, so USM, um, maybe you can expand on that a little bit more. What is USM? Oh, okay, we'll let you take that. <laughs> Great segue. So, uh, so USM is just our way of talking about used serviceable material. And ultimately what we're doing is we're going out and uh, acquiring aircraft on the market and tearing them down and putting the parts into uh, our supply chain. Uh, and we're getting those parts tagged and inspected. So once they come into the facility, they're, they're ready to go for our customers. <clears throat> okay, well, how, how long has Boeing been involved in something like uh, the USM? 
Well, that's another good question because that's something that a lot of people don't associate us uh, with. And we actually began that program several years ago. Uh, we started with a few piece parts material, uh, but we really uh, started to see a demand for a lot of the single lights, specifically the AS350 uh, aircraft that we're seeing a lot of demand from our customers. So, uh, so we invested uh, heavily there and we saw tremendous feedback from the market that uh, that we could service not only from the, the components that came from the aircraft, but also the engine, the engine modules, the engine accessories that came from that. So it really led to uh, an aha moment within our organization that this, this is a segment that uh, really needs to be serviced. Well, yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. It seems like a very positive element to uh, Boeing's customer support programs. Um, do you see any room for expansion for the uh, USM program or is there much demand for it here in the U.S.? Well, absolutely. Well, no, just the market in general, excuse me. Just the market in general. No, exactly. I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely a, a demand for the, uh, for the market that we're seeing, you know, uh, a lot of us uh, talk about COVID, you know, a lot of things that, that come from COVID. Uh, but one of the things that I think a lot of uh, the viewers here today are probably experiencing is there's, there's a lot of supply chain interruptions for various reasons. You know, the OEMs uh, saw some constriction to their supply chain. So those parts uh, weren't coming in on the regular drumbeat or some of the OEM suppliers were going out of business. So there was an increased demand uh, for parts. So, so a lot of our uh, customers were expressing an interest in getting not only access to parts, but high quality uh, parts where a company like Boeing can stand behind it. So case in point, we, we began discussions with Bell, Bell Helicopter, and uh, both companies found that this would be a great collaboration for, for us to come to the market and provide a steady stream of parts for, for those particular aircraft. So we began a program with Bell of acquiring and parting out the 412 EPs. And we're looking at the entire medium platform, but we're starting with the 412. So, so we'll also support the 212, uh, the 205, 204, and, uh, and those, those platforms as well. But what we're, what we're hearing, what we're seeing from the, uh, from the, from the market is being able for us to work within Bell and being not only working with Bell, but being an authorized USM distributor with Bell, we'll continue to work with that network, not only the Bell owned facilities, but with the Bell CSFs as well to ensure the highest quality of parts to, uh, to the operators as their, as their demand grows for, for inventory. Uh, coupled with that, we want to make sure that we're supporting the global market. So we want to make sure that we're utilizing Boeing's extensive supply base uh, networks uh, in Europe, in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, to keep those parts as close as possible to the operators. That's interesting. Um, the, I know Boeing and Bell have had a long relationship, but this is uh, you know, almost taking it to a different level. What kind of parts are Boeing uh, stocking uh, from the Bell teardowns? So, so we're doing our best to offer a tip to tail uh, availability of parts for our customers. Uh, as you can imagine, when we're tearing down aircraft, it's going to be everything from avionics, hydraulics, uh, uh, dynamic components, but also a parts from the fuselage. Some of those hard to find electrical parts, hard to find fuel parts. But in in above, excuse me, in addition to that, uh, don't forget that we have the access to the PT6 parts as the, for the power sections, um, combining gearbox, fuel accessories as well will all be coming from those aircraft. So we've set up two types of uh, supply base for our, for our customers. We were setting up an exchange pool for items like the engines and the major components where customers can, can turn the uh, items through us. And we're also setting up a pool of parts that we can sell outright things like uh, tail rotor blades or skids or, or cabin material from, from the aircraft, all trying to make sure that we're, we're helping the, uh, the customer keep the aircraft flying and in the air. I think we could spend uh, quite a bit more time on USM, but uh, what else is Boeing focused on to help support the rotorcraft market? Well, I'll turn that one over to, to Jim. Sure, I'll take that. Uh, we've been supporting operators with products throughout the years to keep helicopters flying. Uh, a lot of us know us as a chemical supplier, lubes, oils, greases, adhesives, sealants, paints, and coatings. We have our own paint mixing center here in Dallas. 
uh, cleaning products, but we also support some of the biggest names in the industry, such as Lord Elastomerics, Bendix King, Avionics, um, Batteries, Concord, and Saft. Um, but you may also uh, may not be aware that, that we're an Eaton Aeroquip Tier 1 Master Distributor. Uh, we not only distribute their parts and pieces, uh, but we've got three hose shops strategically located around the U.S. to, to fabricate hoses, uh, both for aftermarket and, and new production. Um, Bell's one of our customers there and other manufacturers uh, through, throughout the industry. And in and addition to that, we have uh, Rolls Royce 250. Right? Yeah, and I, I can tag on that a little bit. So, um, Rolls was actually one of the first, uh, I want to say, major engine contracts we signed, and that was back in actually December of 1999. <clears throat> so we've had a long, uh, great relationship with Rolls Royce uh, from from that standpoint. So the interesting thing about that is is we have, as Jim and Sean talked about, we've got multiple product lines and multiple different OEMs to work with. So. The good thing or really cool thing about working with BGS is it's really platform platform agnostic, right? We're not specific to a certain platform because we supply product support across the across the network of everything from, like I said, pilot supplies to engines to tires and brakes and everything else. But the, the Rolls contract we've had, and that was actually pretty neat because what we do with that is we, we not only support the, the new spares for parts going out to mainly to the MROs, but also to uh, FBOs and operators for, for field maintenance, but we also handle the publications for them. So that's all done electronically through our website. You can purchase engines, modules on top of that. Uh, there's actually a Rolls Royce icon to make it easier for customers that they can go click on and it gives you all the access to everything from parts to tooling, to publications, anything else you need that's related to the Model 250. So it's really a fully, I want to say fully packaged or integrated approach to supporting the customer. And so we, we get a big picture. We look at that from a, a forecasting of what the globe needs or what the entire market needs of every single part number of every single engines made by Rolls Royce. And so it's a, it's quite a forecasting uh, uh, challenge uh, like anything in today's environment, especially, but it's a, uh, it's really a neat, neat opportunity to support customers. And we've done that for, like I said, 24 years now for that program. Well, you, you mentioned forecasting can be difficult. Um, what about soliciting feedback from the market on what they need? You know, what, what kind of programs are, are you doing there? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll take that one as well. There's, there's lots of different tools that we use. Um, we just, we just completed some meetings with some OEMs here recently. And, and really it's about making sure we're looking at the entire market and what's going on in that market space. And so when we're talking about rotorcraft, it's a very dynamic market space, right? It has ups and downs and things happen with oil industry, it changes what's going on. We really have to look at not only talking with the OEMs, but we look at what contracts are out there, what's going on from a geopolitical standpoint, what's going on from a, right now the challenge obviously is raw material support. Uh, but then we also meet with all the major operators and customers globally to understand what they're doing with their fleet, what their flying hours are going to be, what their trends are going to be. And really, because when you start talking about lead times that can be two and sometimes three years out, <laughs> we're really having to be very forward looking in our approach. And so the, the idea is, is that we want to understand and know as much about the business and we work with the customers and the OEMs to make sure we're all aligned with what that business is. And our, and our management teams here that, that work with us really do a good job of really looking out as far as we can. So that's one of the things we're very well known for is the the forecasting ability and really supporting the market space and having a high level of service to customers. But there's a lot that goes into it. We could probably spend days talking about how those tools work, um, but it's a, it's one of our, our key strengths that we really do, I think, a very good job at. Again, challenges this year are, are uh, immense <clears throat> because there's lots of challenges in the market space. We're still dealing with some, I want to say, post-COVID environment uh, from a supply chain, from a labor issue, uh, and our suppliers and manufacturers are they're still struggling there. But our customers are, I think, a little bit tired of hearing about pandemic, but there's still some issues with that going on. So, again, the idea is, is to get as much intel as we can. HAI is a great tool for us. Uh, we'll meet with the many operators, many customers, many major MROs at that time frame. We encourage the feedback to, to understand what the market is. We think we have a pretty good feel on the pulse, but it's always good to hear from the operators themselves to understand what their needs are and what their concerns are. Yeah, Heli Expo is coming up here in just a couple of weeks, um, and uh, it, it, it is an amazing forum where 
can't exchange ideas um, with the industry all at once. It's uh, it always shocks me at how many people are there. So, um, and speaking of the scale of the industry, let's talk about some of the other services that Boeing offers the helicopter industry. What what else does Boeing do for you for our for our industry? Well. Oh, I'll take that one. Uh, Boeing Distribution Services, um, the former KLX, as Ty mentioned, is a, a global strategic partner for integrated supply chain solutions. Um, through our supply chain fusion, we offer integrated parts, chemicals, digital solutions, essentially fasteners, hardware, electrical components, lighting, uh, all to support the helicopter industry, both from the production oh. side and well as the aftermarket side. Um, this is underpinned by our commitment to quality um, in our receiving process and everything that we do in our operational excellence. Um, and we cater both to uh, across the marketplace from civil and military uh, helicopters. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you mentioned production. Can you tell us more about that? How does Boeing's I guess distribution business improve efficiency on parts availability on the production floor. So that's one of our core competencies. We've got a number of services that we offer to, to the OEMs and the tier one suppliers within the industry. You know, Ty spoke about our, our forecasting and planning as far as demand in the aftermarket. One of the services we provide in the OEM space to, to these tier ones um, and the major OEMs is we take on the burden of forecasting and planning their inventory management, preparing kitting solutions for delivery to the production floor, supplier management, as well as technical and engineering solutions or services um, that all really simplify the supply chain uh, for those OEMs. I'll give you an example, uh, bin management programs are minimizing shortages on the production floor. Um, whether through our scanning process, there's a couple different levels of service that we offer, but essentially we take on the, the service of ensuring the parts are close to the production cell, having them in itemized bins gives them complete visibility uh, to their consumption and usage uh, at the point of use at the facility, all helps provide uh, a much more efficient operational flow on the production floor. Um, and this is truly platform agnostic uh, across not just Bell Helicopters, uh, Boeing, but, but other manufacturers and tier one suppliers across the globe. Hey. Okay, well, you, you said you support both production and the aftermarket. Let's talk a little bit more about the aftermarket offerings and that Boeing is able to offer. Well, with Boeing, we work in collaboration with our colleagues in the aftermarket. It's a huge part of our business and to ensure the best solution for our customers. I mentioned earlier, we're platform agnostic. We supply uh, parts across the industry from, from chemicals and our services that I just shared. Uh, gives that support across the globe from our um, various inventory holding warehouses. We're strategically located across the U.S multiple locations in Canada, Alaska, um, the UK, Germany, Dubai, Singapore, Hong Kong, three in Australia and one in New <laughs> Zealand. So we are basically everywhere our customers need us to be. Um, and that vast intel of knowledge, uh, Boeing Distribution Services built up over years has really helped us position um, ourselves to better support the, the operators and maintainers in the industry. Well, okay, that, it, it sounds like, obviously, I mean, I think everybody's aware that Boeing is a global corporation, global organization. It seems like that has to be able to help you guys support your customers in individual regions. Yeah, I'll kind of jump on that and ask, ask Jim to follow up is that, that's exactly right. There's, if you look at our, how we're structured, right, from not only locations, but people, um, we've got teams of people all over the world. Um, some are some are dedicated to engine programs. Some are dedicated to what we call our competitive business. But all those teams wind up funneling back to, I want to say, the management or the teams that manage these programs. 
And so when we look at that, we take that feedback from, there are customers too, in a sense, there are internal customers. And what we get feedback from that is really what is needed at a regional standpoint from a part support, supply support. Uh, we can't always put everything everywhere, but in most cases, especially when we're talking about the products that Jim's talking about, we can position that globally to support the market space. Sean's looking at the same thing from a USM standpoint of where does it make sense to put product and supply um, and so a lot of that is we're asking our customers to provide feedback either through our channels, through your sales team, mm -hmm. through our customer service team, or at HAI, you talked about a great forum. Uh, we listen to that, right? If there's opportunities to serve the market, there's opportunities to sell product, we're going to put those products in those locations to do so. Um, and so really, it, it's to your point earlier, it's, it's understanding the feedback, understanding what the customer's needs are and getting that communication from them and feedback. We've done multiple uh, different seminars. We've done different uh, feedback where we put out pulse surveys. And so all that is, is taken into account and important. So we talk internally about surveys, how people can click on them and not answer them. We actually look at those things and read those things to understand what the customers are looking at. Uh, so any feedback we get from our .com site, any feedback we get through Jim's sales teams, uh, that's all listened to. And then we look at, say, where does it make sense to position and put the product? So I don't know if you guys want to add to that or... Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, the last piece that I would add to it is is the sustainability part of it, right? You know, it helps customers reduce their carbon footprint. Um, we leverage our the Boeing company and the knowledge that we have on regulatory requirements. Very important when you get into the chemical side of things, uh, global trade controls. Um, so that's one of the ways that we're able to leverage um, the requirements of the customer base around the globe, funnel it through our subject matter experts, make sure the right materials in, in the right location uh, close to where they need it. Yeah, and just to wrap it up, finally on the USM side of things, we understand the size matters in cases like this. If customers need a main rotor blade or, or engines, this, this isn't cheap to, to ship back and forth from uh, North America to our international location. So as, as Ty and Jim both mentioned, we want to make sure that we're getting feedback from the customers uh, in on from our international customers of what they need those locations to keep their costs down as much as possible as to keeping that keeping that uh, that the forefront. And that's pretty cool. It seems like uh, big corporations could act, not be responsive. And it seems like Boeing is being exactly the opposite, where you're continually seeking the feedback from your customers to provide them with the best support. So what are some of the other benefits to Rotorcraft customers in working with Boeing? You know, I think all this is, a, we've talked quite a bit um, so far. And I think the main benefit is that one-stop solution. Um, that, that we provide for operators and maintainers, the MRO sites and the OEMs, whether it's a single helicopter operator, large operator with 20 some odd um, helicopters uh, or in the OEM space, we can find a solution to offer everyone from a small washer, a complete engine system, or a total supply chain solution across multiple product lines. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that, um, the, all of us here were customers before we joined AVL or now Boeing. And so seeing the benefits of what, what Boeing has brought to the helicopter market space, in particular, when we start talking about MROs, which is where, where Sean and I both came from, is the investment in material, the investment in inventory, uh, the investment in labor, machines. Running an MRO is not cheap. Running an FBO is not cheap. Um, what Boeing takes off of them is the requirement really to have a large stockhold of inventory. If we're servicing the market at a high level of, of service is what we return, we refer to, then the customers can come to us to get the products they need to support their helicopters without having to have their own very large warehouse or storage of materials, whether it be USM, consumables, engine parts. Um, we're looking to be able to put that investment on us, put the stock on hand to support the marketplace and ensure that we're listening to the customers from that standpoint. Great thing about Boeing is not afraid to invest in it. Obviously we want return and want to sell product, but we're not afraid to go invest to make sure we're supporting the market space. That's impressive. Um, wow. Uh, again, one of the things I love about uh, doing these webinars is uh, the fact that I'm always able to learn something. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, I just checked and we don't have any questions that uh, came in uh, during the webinar today yet. Uh, so let me ask you one that sometimes we finish up with, but I think that it's relevant right now uh, for maybe for each of you. What is one thing that you wish the viewers would take away from the webinar today? What that uh, you'd like them to know more about blowing Boeing Global Services? Kyle, let's start with you. I'll, I'll kick it off, and then I'll let these gentlemen kind of go there. <laughs> I, I think I think the big thing for us is we we've listened to our customers come by, and again, Sean and I have been in the helicopter industry for longer than we probably want to say, but the gray hair probably gives that away. <laughs> um, and, and we've had our customers that have known us for a long time walk by, for example, HAI, and ask where the AVL booth is, and we're standing in the Boeing booth. And so part of this is really to educate customers around, hey, we're, we're part of a much larger organization that has a much more broader, has a much broader service offering to our customers than what we had before when we were, when we were legacy AVL. Um, because we, you're adding in, again, the, the Jepson piece of the business, the ForeFlight piece of the business, the SpectraLab piece of the business, all these different services that help the rotorcraft industry and customers can reach into any segment of that. And we'll, we all talk with each other across all these segments. So we're familiar with the folks at Jepson. Uh, we're familiar with the folks at ForeFlight. So it, it's easy to, if a customer has an issue or needs a solution, we all talk with each other inside the company, and though it's a very large company, um, the Rotorcraft folks all know who each other are, and we can reach out, whether it be the, the BDS side of the business, the, the BDSI or the, the former KLX side, right? We all talk to look at what's what makes sense for business. We've had customers come to us and say, hey, why don't you carry this? Uh, why can't you support me with this? And so that's actually led to us adding other OEMs or other suppliers to our portfolio mix to support the customer. So it's really about that engagement and, and getting customers feedback to us. But the, I think the biggest thing is, is that we're here for servicing the market space. Um, we want to make sure we're taking care of our operation customers. We've, we've been there before. Uh, and so it's really about it, letting customers know what all the services offerings we have. And don't be afraid to come ask for, hey, we need this, or hey, do you have this, or, or uh, can you offer this service? Because we look across the the expanse of Boeing, there's usually a solution that we can find. Um, kind of hard to top that. I think Ty hit on hit on everything there. Uh, for me, I, I just want to remind our customers, especially those that are uh, highly involved in our .com or, or shop.boeing.com or legacyavl.com that people are used to using, is don't be afraid to explore the uh, the website to kind of tag on a little bit what Ty said, that a lot of folks come in uh, to pur purchase their consumable items. But again, hey, if you need a servo, if you need <laughs> heck, a, an engine module for, for your AS350, uh, don't be afraid to start entering those uh, searches within the, uh, within the website. And uh, you, you'd be surprised at what you can find that uh, we'll be able to support you with. So again, just to tag on a little bit what Ty was saying, I think it's just market awareness, letting people know that, hey, we're here, we're here to help. And uh, hopefully we've got the, the parts uh, that you're looking for. So. Yeah, speaking of the, the website, shop.boeing.com, you know, gives you access to both BDI, formerly AVL, and BDSI. So you can find everything you need there. So, you know, I, I think the most important thing is the voice of the customer. Um, you know, that's my biggest takeaway. Ty, you articulated it really well. Um, you know, it's the feedback from the customer, either through my sales organization, um, through the other, other forums, HAI as well. Uh, we try to stay as close as possible to the customer demand. We're here to help. And, and we need that feedback from the customers. And, and as Ty noted, uh, oftentimes we can come up with some pretty creative solutions, whether it's aftermarket repairs, AOGs, all the way back to what I talked about earlier with the OEM solutions that we offer for on uh, tier ones and the major OEMs in production. Yeah, and just one other point that I'll add on and remind me when you're talking there, Jim, is that um, when we look at our company, we're very fortunate from the standpoint of the, the people that we have managing these programs are very experienced people that come from the industry, right? We're, we're not talking about people that don't have an idea of what the operators are going through. The managers that we have for these programs, whether it be Rolls-Royce or Bendix or 
any of these programs we have, they're very experienced, very knowledgeable, understand what the market is. They've come from that market space. So it really gives a good, uh, I want to say a full view of what is required from a customer standpoint, because we've been there. And so it's, it's really uh, trying to make sure that we're supporting the market or the customer in any way we can. Well, gentlemen, either you're uh, speaking to your audience directly or your uh, your presentation answered everybody's questions. We don't uh, did not receive any questions. That's not unusual. It's usually because the, the presentation covered everything so uh, aptly. So it, it, you did well. I appreciate it. Um, let's uh, let me thank you all three for taking the time to join us today to explain uh, Boeing Global Services. Um, I know that I, again, learned a great deal about, uh, I, I didn't realize that Boeing had relationships like this uh, that were so extensive and had such extensive uh, customer service programs. So this was fantastic for me and I'm sure the audience appreciated it as well. Uh, thank you. Appreciate the time. Yeah, one, one last thing, Dan, is that you know, your, your show that you guys are is coming up, obviously in a couple of weeks, great opportunity to get feedback from customers. So anything that comes out of this, any questions I have, we welcome them. All three of us will see at that, that show. So oh, we'll there we go. So look for the Boeing, look for the Boeing booth, not the Avial booth. Correct. <laughs> we'll okay, well, hey, we'll see you uh, in Anaheim then. Hope we can uh, see some of our audience there as well. Gentlemen, have a, a great afternoon. Great. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Dan. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and uh, get things wrapped up here for the uh, afternoon. Uh, let me share my screen here one more time. Uh, some of our upcoming topics uh, for our webinars. We are now going to a monthly webinar. Um, kind of felt like we could give you guys better quality uh, for the webinars by uh, going to once a month. Our March 14th webinar, um, we just got uh, rescheduled. So I'm going to uh, leave that one open right now. I'm probably going to bring in somebody from... Uh, Heli Expo, some of the people who are running some of the courses there. We'll see if we can find one of the more popular ones. Um, people may not be able to get into it there, but we could probably get them to do it online and uh, make it available to uh, those who can't attend Heli Expo. On April 11th, we're going to be talking about uh, enhancing AI, AI, artificial intelligence in aircraft operations. We just did a topic similar to this. This is going to be from a, a professor at Georgia Tech who is trying to also work on some of the same things, but also uh, take it in a little bit different direction. I hope you'll join us for that one. And then on May 9th, we have a presentation, uh, I believe it'll be John Piasecki from Piasecki Aircraft, talking about his hydrogen powered aircraft. And then that will help lead us into June and July in the summer. Uh, Heli or HAI, we love to share news. Our webinars um, are just one way we do that. Um, Rotor.org is a great place to go to subscribe to Rotor Daily. Rotor Daily is a daily news aggregator that we are the ones who go through Google every morning. We go through the uh, FAA, EASA's websites, and everybody else's websites to get some of the information that you need to know that's going on in the industry. Um, it's free. It comes to your email box. When I uh, Before I came to HAI, I would uh, get my cup of coffee on the West Coast, uh, mid-morning break, and read Rotor Daily so I could see what was going on. Um, we do the collecting that you don't have to. Rotor Magazine is an award-winning quarterly publication where we can get more in-depth. You, you see the 75th uh, anniversary edition there on the uh, screen right now. Um, we were delayed in printing that. It is coming out. It will probably be in your home on Monday of this coming week. Um, it's an exciting topic. Uh, one of the things that we looked at is we found, we sat down and figured out there's 42 different missions that helicopters perform. And so let's get deep inside that and look to see what uh, those missions are. It's going to be a really cool issue loaded with great photos of helicopter operations. Um, we think that's one that's going to sit on your uh, coffee table for quite a while. Again, to subscribe, go to rotor.org slash subscribe. Rotor, uh, Rotor Daily is free. Rotor Magazine is free unless you're outside the United States. And then we have a small stipend for uh, shipping charges. We do appreciate feedback for webinars. Uh, tell us what worked, what didn't work, what you'd like to see on an upcoming topic. Um, if you have suggestions for presenters, let us know on that. Um, 
And HAI is a membership-based organization. We are here to serve. We need to know what you want us to do or what we've been doing that's not correct, what you'd think we should be doing less of or we're doing the wrong way. Tell us that too. Best way for that is to go to right to the top, president at rotor.org. Jim Viola is absolutely wanting to know your feedback. Um, if there's something that requires action, he will delegate that to uh, one of our staff members and we do get that information uh, back oh. to the person who asked the question right away. That does uh, conclude our webinar for today. We thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch this. Uh, we will be back in a month with uh, post Heli Expo uh, news and a webinar. Until uh, until next month, we ask that you be safe and you fly safe, and we'll see you again very, very soon.